Oh man, I love this. Team Moped, we got flower power up there around the headband, and then uh, some very, is that like an army helmet on top of a corgi? This is great, love it. Oh! Okay, I like it. No? Oh, don't oh, my bad. This is bad. Yeah. That's perfect. So, it, it does look like Meepo banned right at the start now, uh, as well as the Mars taken out. We've got Pango uh, and the Brewmaster all removed from this uh, opening one. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, just right out of the get-go that there's probably some amount of targeted uh, bands right. going on right. here where maybe then. they did a little bit of research about you know what Hi, we were playing last time and then witch doctor one of the best ones that we could hope to see ever uh trendster we saw some interesting stats that we were looking at uh the the other day about witch doctor that it's actually one of the heroes that like is just best for even it like no matter what in almost any situation it feels like well yeah we're fixed hi everybody thank there you is. so much for uh for going through <laughs> you know it's actually uh it's nice that uh, I wish this happened in, in some of the the larger tournaments too, because I always make these massive mistakes at the start. So <laughs> it's like I just got a free pass, you know. That's good. It's like just the, we're just I hit the reset button. Life's all good. If only all my real conversations could go like this. But uh, yes, so uh, I'm saved. You're saved. We're all here. Uh, Witch Doctor first into a, a line. What was I saying in that whole thing? Oh, I like to. You know, I it's like the, uh, the comfort. That was the main thing. We'll go with that. Comfortable heroes are what really matter when you come into competition because you want to be thinking much more about the game and less about what you need to do specifically. Like with just your little bubble hero, you need to think as a unit. Mm. The more you're focused on your single hero because you're lacking experience on it and you're not comfortable, well, the less mental energy you have to spend on your teammates. And you got to help your teammates in a tournament like this. That's true. Gotta help the teammates. Gotta make sure that you're setting them up for success whenever possible. Again, a big difference between uh, sort of competitive matches and pubs. Um, so let's see, what do we have here? At least at the early going on, dying afterwards. Got a lot of okay. supports come out here. Or maybe not. Could be the three undying, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, that would be... Uh, I mean, I, I know that that's been like kind of growing in, in popularity recently. I always wonder like how quickly I think for every individual person that plays Dota, there's going to be like a difference in terms of how quick you're picking up on what the pros are doing. Um, so for instance, whenever I play, I try and do what the pros are doing. And I just fail spectacularly and like mm -hmm, lose mm -hmm. 200 MMR. Yeah. Uh, but some people are really good at it. So I, I'm curious if that'd be a three. That'd be cool. Losing is learning guys. So that, that's good. doesn't feel quite as good in competition compared to just your pubs though. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the time you want to win. This is, this is the, the, the losing and just learning thing was for like a week ago. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Taking their time here, the Corgi Army. I mean, you know, you got uh, this is one of your bigger picks in the draft as the first pick. Uh, it, this is probably one of your most impactful ones because you're supposed to have a lot of info on like in this case, you see both supports. So you're hoping to try and figure out a general strategy that maybe they can't stop. Uh, and then you're mm. also going to get your three bands to then protect this hero if you want. So in this case, with a Centaur War Runner, you could say that like, oh, hey, look, like, you know, we can just stampede away from a lot of this stuff. I can globally help someone who gets hex ganked. And uh, and maybe we could ban out some of those like uh, Monkey Kings or in this case, the Juggernaut heroes that maybe Centaur doesn't necessarily want to lean versus. Uh, something to watch for, for sure. I, I want to put out a couple of notes that we got from the uh, the team putting together this tournament um, mm -hmm. about Corgi Army with the with the notes that we got. Prioritizing good lane matchups, 10 to 17, 18 carry, and like the last pick mid lane heroes. I'm not sure if I should be reading this all out on stream. I feel like I'm giving info to the future teams. Uh, yes, but yeah, carry, true. <laughs> carry players are normally on a hyper late game scaling carry, abusing teams not being able to finish games quickly like to try and roam on their four if they feel the lane is strong enough. So, so far, at least, they're leaving open that four position to be whatever it is that they want to go for. Um, and I guess that this, again, is more of that insurance policy, like you're talking about the Centaur to get that carry that's going to be so important for them uh, out of harm's way in the mid game. Well, they're, uh, they're, I, you know, they're also just going right for the stats, right? As you said, the Wind Ranger and the Jug. 
I mean, they're just gone. Yeah. The the, the two best heroes. Hmm. <laughs> they're oh. just looking at those numbers. They saw that tweet. They're like, oh, all right. Because <laughs> I don't want to deal with those today. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> the stats, they're being hit so hard. I mean, even Dawnbreaker now gone. That hero's crazy. I, I don't know. That that just, it, it seems like such a, a impossibly broken hero with like the amount of mana pool that you have to keep spamming your spells in lane, how tanky she is. Uh, it's just impossible. Speaking of complained about heroes, I mean, Silencer is definitely one that I keep hearing a lot about. Apparently, it was one of the most picked or banned, which does not surprise me. Um, as okay. It is a hero that uh, I think, kind of like what you said, where like people like to pick up on what pros are doing. Some people, I think, go right for what is the most annoying thing in pubs right now and start spamming that. And to me, that kind of feels like Silencer. Mm. You know, as you're, you're just trying to spam a bunch of damage in the laning stage. Sometimes you uh, you don't get the right counter pick to it. Like maybe you don't have any sort of a dispel and it just feels like there's absolutely nothing you can do. Uh, certainly a hero that you might want to look for. I think Night Stalker is also similar in some people's brain right now in terms of just being a uh, outright annoying person to versus. Well, it's uh, one that definitely has been taken over um, a lot of the high MMR pubs as well. And, you know, can look. Uh, really good if given the right circumstances. Uh, another of the little note breakdown real quickly from uh, Team Moped. And like they want a lot of the, the team fight from their offlane, which, you know, would sort of signal something other than this Undying 3 that we're thinking about. So probably going to be a support instead. Uh, securing lanes from position 5, ganking from 4, uh, mid game, uh, peak mid laner, hyper late game carry drafts, Clinks, Bloodseeker, Slark, Weaver, high priority second phase bans. Uh, but we haven't seen any of them here. So mm. leaving that open a little bit, and now is the opportunity to take it. Uh, if Pia so desires. Well, I always like myself some Tide Hunter in these games. I feel like Tide is a hero that uh, is rather easy to like base your game plan around. Can go poorly for sure if you fall a little bit behind and, and it feels like there's more and more pressure on every one of your, your ravages. But uh, in general, I feel like it's a, it's a pretty good hero. Okay. That's what I'd be hoping for. But uh, they're going to grab the Luna. Now, I believe they, Luna. they had just banned Spectre on the Cory army. And I think that Luna and Spectre, yes, both zero and five uh, so far in the tournament from day one. So they're looking to turn this around with the uh, the Luna's first win. I mean, that's a strong lane, though. If we're going to be honest, the the like Luna Undying, uh, which is what I'm assuming it's going to be. Uh, it could be something different, but oh, but Drow. So the double pick coming out in the second phase from the Corgi army. Mm. Rick has a, an idea of how to deal with this. I like Would how you think fast about... they went for that too. Just like yeah. snap pick it. It's interesting. I, would you be thinking about a morph at all for Corgi Army? Do like Dark Willow with morph. Oh, you get, play. To, you get the strats going a mid morph. Hey, if they've got a mid morph, it, uh, That'd be pretty cool. it's got some possibilities there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lion, but other than that, Undyne's got no stuns. Luna's a bit whatever. Seems unnecessarily risky. I like it. <laughs> I feel like most mids would just do really well with their draft, but okay. <laughs> you want to go just wild? Like, go wild. Just go Dragonite or something. It's probably fine. Um, yeah, the Drow though, just being able to like burst right through that, uh, that, that like the majority of the armor coming from Luna from the the Agi. So I don't know. What do you take now to deal with that? That, that feels well, kind of tough. Like the uh, the Centaur pick we discussed earlier with the fourth overall. These are the two most important picks. Uh, for the team that has second picks. So you basically you make your way to the draft up until this point, and hopefully you've got a lot of flexibility going, uh, or you just have a really strong idea of what you want and you have a lot of options left. And in this case, they have pretty good options left. Lots of mid-heroes. We basically lost almost no mid-heroes throughout the drafting phase. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of offlaners are gone, though. So that, that barrel's a little bit, uh, you know, you're then scraped. You know, it's, it's, it's real there dirty down there. But uh, they'll find themselves Ooh. a chaos night. Nice some strats right. here i like it I, I actually like that a lot um they they are kind of lacking team fight spells but i mean corgi army kind of i mean they have willow and centaur so they, they, they have much better like fight around the eventual roche pit and stuff we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes um but yeah gonna need some mid for moped that that really can make a lot of space uh but as you said a lot of those heroes are available we'll see what they go for well, they're taking out a couple of the, uh, well, at least first off, just Viper. You know, straight up. Don't want to deal with that. Ten Fair enough. Uh, as uh, the Corgi Army, they'll have to choose first. So 
Maybe a uh, a Kunkka feels kind of good. I know you're a little bit of a Kunkka fan. A Spirit Hero would also be great just to assist in their initiation. One thing that's nice is that um, if you play a Spirit Hero with a Center on your team, you don't have to have that issue where like you jump in and the rest of the team kind of struggles to keep up. Maybe you dive a bit too deep. Uh, sometimes you can just go for these like big game winning fights off of a Spirit jumping and a Stampede aggression. Mm. I kind of would like the idea again of maybe going back to that DK of like something that's just very easy to set up, play mm -hmm. around like blink and play fast. Um, but Kunk, I guess, fulfills sort of the same role, at least up until BKBs come out. Yeah, I'm down for the DK, too. I mean, you got the Drown on your team, too, right? Yeah. Feels pretty good. And Banning Viper. It feels Range like a, Squad. Feels like a <laughs> thing for DK. <laughs> Storm. Also taken out of the pool now. We're going to take the puck away. That would also be very annoying. Um, we'll see what Moped decide to take away as well. Is there anything else that like is super scary against their lineup? Honestly, I wonder if uh, if Moped have a Tinker player. That could be kind of cool too. Mm. There's definitely something there. What about Tinker for Corgi Army? The only downside there is that uh, they have the uh, potential on the uh, the counter pick, but I mean. I mean, they've also just banned out the storm themselves, so for moped, so yeah, could be something there. And uh, there goes the morphling. They're, they're onto it. They got yeah. their brains in action. They don't want to fight no morph willow. It's a fair shout. Oh, Thirty seconds reserve time left for the Corgi army, and we're looking for the mid. I, hypothetically, you could swap it around and put drow mid. Yep. Uh, seems unnecessary though, unless you think that lane is going to be particularly tough, which could be a concern. Uh, but you have Witch Doctor there to help you out, too. I'm really looking forward to this uh, potentially offlane, I assume, Chaos Knight. Because I haven't seen that build in quite a while. And, uh, yeah, there's go Void Spirit. Big fan. I, th I think that's an excellent pick. That's probably my favorite pick that was there in terms of the spirits and, like, what they see in the enemy team. Because all I want is just, like, basic initiation with good reach. And then you also scale into some AoE abilities. Oh, but look at the speed into Whoa. that track pick. They were also ready for that one. That's some tower push. Very interesting. Well, we've got ourselves all five heroes lined up for each squad. Trent, uh, mm -hmm. you like the Void Spirit pick a lot. You like the speed with which they picked the Lesh, so they had ideas of what they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, is there one draft that you're kind of favoring over the other? Uh, not by much. I As much as, like, I think the Corgi Army draft looks uh, a little bit more, like, standard. That You know, you can kind of see where all the heroes fit in and everything, and uh, they have a good balance across the board. Uh, I also kind of like the speed that they can hit these towers of this Lash Rack. I think Lash Rack really tied this draft in together nicely because the, the Chaos Knight 3, if uh, you've seen it, you know, more more recently has, has tended to do a very good job of getting, like, some kind of quick picks into, like, this little bit of lane shove, but then maybe things kind of fall off a bit and you're, like, farming with your ulti. But if you have yourself a Lash Rack, knock down some towers, create more space on the map, open it up for your Luna, game looks pretty good. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm digging that then. Uh, we'll see if they can make that space that they need to, uh, or if Corgi Army is just going to be able to try and run them down a little bit. And of course, all of this stuff starts at the laning stage. You lose suddenly a couple of lanes, and all this stuff we're talking about gets thrown out the window, and it becomes crazy, which I'm hoping happens. I hope we just see some mayhem, <laughs> as often goes on in these games. Maybe some 60 miniatures. We'll get to those late-game items. Pretty cool. The uh, we don't really have any massive team fight spells in this game. No, you, have, you know you got like your stampede. I guess if you're, you're talking about like big, like we're fighting now, and then we basically have tombstone. But aside from that, it's going to be uh, a lot of skill shots, a lot of just like little spells throughout the uh, the team fight that can make the big difference. There's no big ravages uh, in those situations. Like I think uh, Lulu has a really nice looking game. Like being able to to jump in and get the the big silences off. I feel like he's uh, he's got quite a bit of pressure on on this one. That's fair. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, it's going to be a uh, an interesting one also uh, on the side of Team Moped, uh, Mazzino. I think that that's kind of the, the, the hero that I think has to have a good game. You need to get a blink on this lion um, to really allow them to uh, sort of get the game going and, and make stuff work. But get the GLHFs as we head out across the map. 
and we'll see if there's any surprises in terms of laning setups. Everything looks fairly standard, though, although Centaur is heading up top. Maybe they're going to run some type of aggro thing. Bracer, some tangos. Yeah, I think you might be uh, might be right there. I mean, hey, it would be nice to set the drow up well on the earlier end, too. Get some ancients over there on that dire side. Could start prepping some stacks. Or perhaps it's just for an aggro play. Lulu draws the line. <laughs> Meanwhile, Let's Leshrac go. draws the other line of, hmm, it might come down there. So many possibilities. And uh, it does look like they're going to be walking up towards this high ground here. And I'm not sure if Moped is quite going to scout this out before they're already up on the high ground. Although, you know, sees them. Ooh, there's a stun all the way at the start. Going for the cast. Bounces around a couple of times to get the impale off. But first blood going to be drawn by that witch doctor. And for our life needs to get away as well. But a couple more punches. And they take two quick kills. Bottom off guard with the aggro there. Just they, they walked right into it. They had no idea. Just marched up the high ground and hits the, uh, the first stomp. Very well done. Fight recap. Right. Nice, nice. Fresh new UI here. <laughs> I'm not used to the uh, the new look for the death indicator on that. It used to be so like upfront and red in the face, but this one a little bit more muted. It's fine. It's all gonna be good. We're gonna get used to it soon. You remember looking at the old freaking uh, HUD from from Dota? Oh, it's terrible. And random question: Can you click heroes and see their inventories? Yes, I can. Oh, nice. <laughs> Are you not able? To? That must be cool. <laughs> that, might, that might need to be a reconnect, buddy. Um, unfortunate but, you know we're just uh we got a we got a pretty big tournament coming up soon so it's it's good that <laughs> we're just working on changing up how all of the uh the viewing tools work yeah just just in time just in time uh, oh no the courier ooh. oh that's such a good feeling when you're playing undying dr j get them the slap but anyway which i actually uh i'm a, a massive undying gamer yeah uh, it's a good hero. I don't know. I feel like sometimes I just want to play Dota and just play on Dime because of this exact situation where my lane just feels like... I. The best thing is that you feel like you're most impactful in the first four minutes. And then after that, I mean, really, the game's out of your hands. You know, if you can just do a lot with Decay, really, what more can your team ask for? You get your carry off to a good start. Secure that arm. Maya needs it. Got to get stacked up. And so far, looking pretty good. Uh, Luna and Drow both doing quite well in terms of CS. Uh, the opposing offlaners struggling a little bit here. Um, as you can see, two and three on CK at the very least. So uh, it's been a little bit of a, a pressure back there for the Centaur, but now gain a little bit of extra time. All right, I can drag select heroes. It's fine. Oh, I looked at them guys. all the time anyways. When you run into this Ooh. issue, guys, you're solid. Ooh, Done. maze again. Careful, throws out the stun to keep him from getting too much extra damage there. Does have a salve after the fact, uh, but with this wave coming in, this is actually going to be a, a very nice start there. Uh, mid, haven't talked about it a whole lot yet, but mm. the Void Spirit facing off against the Lesh, uh, and not able to connect there with that Astral uh, Spirit, but they'll be able to probably trade off farm pretty consistently here, and then just trade out the bottle region constantly too. Yeah, Lulu does have the bottle ready, so he's going to head up and grab that. And uh, likewise, Evertrox does have the bottle coming, too. So she be fine in a moment there. And she'll uh, should be able to start hitting up her small camp, too, pretty soon. So game is good. Zen getting the double stack working for the uh, Dark Willow. Eventually will be very helpful for that drought. And the eventual rotations happen, head off to the side. But so far, at least, uh, not a huge disparity, which is kind of interesting, right? I feel like what sometimes happens in these like lower level pubs is that there can be like a really huge disparity in the lanes very quickly. But uh, both drafts have kind of worked themselves out to not get uh, completely owned in the early going. Always kinda, I kind of like it when we get a little bit of the more passive laning stage so that uh, the game doesn't get wildly out of hand one way or the other. Right. Sometimes that'll happen where you go a little bit uh, too aggro, like because you, you feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing the laning stage or something, and uh, you end up kind of kind of blowing your your start. So now we chill. 
True. Oh, Rick. Oh, oh. oh, it's a lot of damage out there. I Oh, does a little do -si do heads <laughs> out through the other side and gets away. Winkle toes there. Oh, yeah. She's got the speed. Very nice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, there's a creep wave under there. They might dive this. Um, needs to hide back behind. Dodrick making the wraparound. Undying a little ways away. Does have a point in Solrip. Keeps him alive. Papaya, will she be able to survive? Does not look like it. Right clicks come through. It will finish the Luna. Doctor, unfortunately, uh, one of the downsides to playing Undying is that sometimes you, you feel like you can't save your carry. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going to make stuns. Uh, you know, I work a lot better on the offense than the defense a lot of the time. So Dr. J will just have to, to watch if she burns. But uh, she will be returning. Rick is just uh, right on it, though. Just he's going to march right up there. Oh, my goodness. No fear at all. Well, at least for now, uh, we're going to keep our, our eyes on uh, each of these lanes. does look like up on the top side here, they were able to get a uh, nice little side pull off onto a stacked camp. Um, and that should mean a pretty decent creep wave coming in. Uh, so CK at least having a, a little bit of a decent time uh, as RM tries to make the move over, get stunned, but back away, everything back to normal again. And soon we'll be having this, uh, this movement, I'm sure, out of our mid laners, right? Ourselves, Epitronics and Lulu jumping around. Much more likely to be Lulu, of course, who's able to score the easier kills as the Void Spirit. Sort of uh, your, your burden as a spirit from the mid lane. But uh, then you're always going to have to watch this pressure of... Uh, you know, sometimes it's, can Lester Act take my tower? We haven't seen some of this, like, 2 2, -two build or um, 2 2, -two into, to one more at 7. So, like, maybe it'll go, like, 2 one two ulti and then come back for the Edict. But um, this is pretty common to have the low Edict for uh, difficult tower pushes. Uh, all right, easy live. All right, I'm never concerned up top. Oh, good TP Perfect from Maze, too. Very nice. That'll keep them both alive. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, definitely necessary to get that Lion online towards the Blink Dagger eventually. Uh, there's a little bit of a go in the mid lane now. Chronix has to back away from Lulu, getting slightly aggro. And it's like with that Catapult being underneath the tower now, we'll be able to clean that one out. We'll see if there are any other rotations with the next round of runes coming up. That one was just the illusion. But across the board, uh, you take a look at like net worths at this point and you know CS and everything is very even. Um, there's not like a huge discrepancy void spirit on the top marks, uh, at least for now. And uh, likely until we see some big rotation for a kill, things are feeling very passive in this lane. It's hard to get aggro. It feels like uh, maybe Lulu's just waiting for a good rune or uh, yeah. some sort of an opportunity to present itself from like a dive or something. And other than that, just sort of content farming it out here, uh, considering going right for the uh, the Sanj and Kaya. Very popular on uh, pretty much all the spirits at this point, I guess. Uh, you know, Ember. But uh, alright, it's on half the spirits. I don't know why I said all the spirits. I, I'm not building Sanj and Kaya my Earth spirit, guys, I promise. Alright, it, it's Void oh. and Storm. They, they love the item, okay? All the spirits that matter. All that's, the ones, that's yeah, going all on. that are important. <laughs> all right, up top side, they're gonna get that gust off. That could have been a pretty decent stun opportunity there, but uh, wasn't able to get it off in time and treads completed along with bracer big tanky ck uh at six i don't know Sick, it, that was a big save Bara, i yeah. Bara might have been dead there <laughs> like, yeah man, maybe because maze was only level three too they might not have had like quite the damage but uh, very good use of the early silence not something you see all too often um getting like good use out of it so and uh, has the right band too the long forgotten item drow pretty much the only hero that goes for this now mm. As uh, slippers have just gained so much value, but uh, definitely approve of this decision. Save you some slots. Maybe grab another one after two if you want. Depends on how the game's going. Why not? It's going to be uh, a regen rune, too, here. So, again, not really helping. I mean, for one thing, Lulu's not going to get it. So, great grab there for Epitronks. Yeah, that is huge. Uh, you can use this just to farm out the entire jungle. Have there been that many more stacks being made? It looks like it's still just the double that are over on the uh, Dire Ancients at this mm -hmm. point in time. Uh, but Lulu getting a little bit of a feeling for wanting to move down bottom, but uh, realizes that with the creep wave coming in, you can't really make that play with Lesh as you're talking about. So uh, again, a nice little part of this draft for Moped is uh, keeping this Void Spirit stuck in the lane. Yeah, it didn't get the early rotations, and now with the three points in Edict, you, you don't really want to go anywhere. You see level eight, and you might think, like, hmm, my tower's just going to be gone. In fact, it's 
Epitron's actually going to make a move. Now, this is tough because they have the Stampede down bottom. Right. Uh, and so there's a real concern of a turnaround play if she makes that move. And instead, she's like, you know what? I'm just going to think of myself. Maybe I'll just consider some stacking or something, but sees the wave and wants to get back mid. Go up top Meanwhile, there. Looking for it, and the crit <laughs> comes through, finds the big blow up. Uh, not bad at all. So, a trade off there is both supports die, as often happens. Uh, does have level six now on uh, well for life, but not gonna attempt to go for anything there. This is always my big question with CK at this point in the game is it's like, what do you do with this first ulti? Do you like try and just farm with it? Like, I, I feel like that you can maybe go for a kill, but you kind of need another person. It's weird. Yeah, you need your support to go kill. Uh, Dr. J. Oh, he, is he the liver? Dr. J, the liver? Not gonna happen. Not oh. Meanwhile, Stampede gonna be used also. Trunks there, but they will not go for any further fight. Uh, but I think that was a TP used. So they managed to find the kill on the Undying. Again, a 3,000 gold lead. Uh, not the end of the world at this point in time in the game, but definitely uh, the Corrigis are having a good time of it. Yeah, Mopeds are looking for the catch-up, though, as uh, Papaya, she's made her way into the Ancients, so grabs a stack on the camp. We'll start uh, farming her way through here as well, so... You know, it it's a Luna. She'll make her way back up. There's uh -oh. no doubt about that. Wrong. One look at the to back out. This is in trouble. They got a DD as well, and that is going to be the kill that Top they needed. Two. Oh, the they turnaround! What defender. a chance. She comes Dang. through, but can't quite save her, I don't think. Ugh. Jay Liver tries to make it happen. A couple more punches is all they need. Gus back up in a bit, but no mana to spend. And they will find that kill. So again, the trade-off's happening. Um, and that was much needed, getting that kill on the draw after losing the Lesh. Yeah. Try and slow them down a little bit. And uh, again, try and increase the value of what uh, Papaya is getting right now in the triangle. Should be able to clear up this Golem as well before the 11 minute. Go, go fight it, Papaya. Come on, this is the battle of your life. Kill the golem. Ah. That's just a reset. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, the block it now. Yes. Ah, oh, Papaya's got it. Perfect. Easy strats. Papaya's good. You can see now, like, I, I, the opening up down bottom, Oryx going to try and take this tower. Uh, things looking pretty solid uh, all across the board for the Corgis. Uh, but, of course, it's going to come down to, like, what, what can they sort of accomplish can they actually shut down this Luna from farming? Um, at least for now, it hasn't really happened. As, and, ooh, Stampede? They, they attempted the Stampede play up top. Oh, they will start uh, opting for the trade here with their last rack up trunks. Just going to edict this tower down very quickly. I doubt they're going to try and contest, especially now there's no Stampede. That was basically their bailout button right there. So, ooh. Uh, I'm just farming bot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. In the triangle, buy it. Oh, gets caught out. Oh, just a really good recognition there by Lulu that farm in low and uh, goes to check out if Luna's in danger. And she was. Oh, and Rick up top. He goes in. Uh, this is huge if they can get it, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Instead, it's Dota Rick that might be the one that's going down. Instead, can they kill him off? Yes, they will. We're on the other side, base defender getting chased down, but finds the finish onto the CK. Oh, Lulu, though. The space being made from Rick, capitalizing. Got him nice and low. The alley oop on Lulu only gets one kill though, unfortunately. Uh, not quite the uh, the tools available yet to go for some more. But hey, man, I thought that tower was gonna be free up top for sure. But uh, yeah. because of the kill that Lulu snagged on Papaya, gave them the confidence to go in. And uh, Rick, you know, gave the body, threw the body in, and said, "I will go down for my tower," and was successful. On oh, big plays. Big, big plays. Three to nine, 3,000 gold lead. So staying about even with where it's been this entire time. Uh, and you can see that sort of uh, differential that we're seeing is mainly via the Void Spirit picking up a couple of those clutch kills. Uh, and then, you know, little differences here and there elsewhere. But uh, It was a five level lead. Now it's only a three level lead. You just love the level lead. What? Huh? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> yeah. Numbers are overrated. Levels are where it's at. For anybody that wants a, a TED talk, just hit up Trent and he'll uh, he'll be sure to eliminate you on why he, he's very uh, not a fan of that. But that's fine. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Smoke up top. Thank you, Valve. <laughs> X there. Oh, Gonna connect. Man. This is prime for a cat. Oh, this is Danger Town. Oh, able to dodge away from the cast. Nice. And that silence, though. Oh, and the terrorized afterwards. The chase down. 
damage. Dr. Ulti, not going to be enough for the kill, but do they have anything left in the tank to chase down the rest of Moped? Doesn't look like it. Oh, Lulu, though. Lulu's feeling it. This is kind of wild. I don't know if that one was going to work. Uh, all bait. It's all bait. Stun. Not going to be there. <laughs> the team is not coming. This is not a bait. Uh, a it's lot a of emphasis, game. a lot of emphasis placed up on this like top half of the map. You can see that it's pretty well uh, held by just both teams. Uh, nobody's playing bottom right now. Everybody wants to battle. Oh, mid, Lulu, finding a solo kill maybe. Drops. Oh, not gonna be able to survive. Lulu taking over this game. The chase back, but they managed to find that hex. The impale afterwards. The kill. I could like feel the stress on O for Life there, just thinking like, oh please, oh please, let me get this kill without ulting. I didn't ult at the start of this. Oh god, <laughs> that's how I always feel. Yeah, easy game though, and uh, of course still has the ulti ready. And uh, I can't click the Chaos Knight. How close is the armlet? How close is it, Gabe? I well, you know, it's very close. It is uh, what a sixty gold away. Oh, thank you. I'm not allowed to click it. Oh, now I can click the items. All right, we're good. Perfect. Yeah, this is uh, this is potentially a scary timing. Like, you you start playing around with the CK with armlet treads, a bracer, um, heroes will will kind of get collapsed on. Epitronx, I can just feel this uh, this vindictive taste for this tower. Just wants it so bad. Yeah, I think uh, I think she's got it this time though. Uh, they are not coming back. They're rotating down towards the bottom side. Oh, now I say that. They got a smoke prepped here in the mid. They're going to pop it. They're on the move. Oh, this would be a big kill on Papaya. Oh, not Papaya her. again. Oh, that's that's the danger zone. Uh, but the night vision. Night vision from Luna. Maybe can spot this coming. Tries to head out the other direction, and they're over there as well. The chase down comes. Four heroes bottom. Managed to find that kill onto the Luna. But they do get the top tower in exchange. It was an impressive fan out the way they did that like that, you know? Yeah. They kind of covered all the exits there. They were very confident that Luna was farming down there. Yeah. And they're going to turn that into a, a couple waves good on the bottom as well as a little bit of pressure in mid. They actually abandoned their pressure in mid, though, worrying about some potential play, but this pressure is free right now. Catapult swinging. Actually could have even gotten the tower. Of course, they weren't aware of the fact that uh, Team Moped was actually moving through like the dire jungle area up top and, and weren't there to punish. Yeah. Stay off map. I don't know where you are. Ends up turning it into a, uh, a push deflected. As, again, Void Spirit playing down here on the bottom side of the map, hoping somebody shows up, but can get that pressure here as well. Oh, look uh, at that. This is much more valuable. Yeah, yeah. T took the tower aggro too. This catalyst has been swinging for two full waves. Lulu's covering with the Aether Remnants, and this is just free. This tower is gone. Yep. Up ahead in the meantime. And we're going to try and play a little bit more aggro ourselves. They're going to head up top, and looks like Godoric is going to be able to get out of there. But they have really good vision in the area right now uh, on Team Moped. Who's in, able to get a Sentry D Ward there, and TB coming in. Blue, they dropped the Tombstone down. This is our area. Back off. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that's very tough right now for Team Moped is that they don't have a great way to start fights. Uh, they basically rely on their forcing towers with Leshrac. I mean, it's good that they have that. They have the ability to actually just, like, force towers and, and cause them to need to engage uh, from the dire side. But other than that, like, you know, Lion, if if Lion was able to get to over Blink, but is thinking about going for the Glimmer, which I also don't mind either. Ooh, so. Stampede. Oh, oh but they oh, get the ulti no. off. Jump away, tries to get out. Silence is there. Stun afterwards. Lesh down a little bit, but able to get off a good chunk of damage here. And over life, they get the ulti off from the oh, lion. Armor toggles. toggles keep them alive. Uh, can they find anything else there? Tombstone had already been used. Still enough damage to take down two, but it's going to come at the cost of everybody on the side of Team Moped. Oh, man. They all and fall. Ultra. Arum. Arum's just sitting back there slaying, too. Oh, the start of the fight looked so good for Moped, but they, they turned it back real fast. Uh, that was tough. I Army mean, of Corgis. They just they just ate you up, I guess. True. Corgi army is dangerous. And uh, again, taking good advantage of you know that tombstone being on cooldown, but I think also just like the timing, like you were talking about. You were really close to 
Lion picking up a, an item here, whether that be the Glimmer or the Blink. Um, they, they did just get the CK armlet, so maybe that's part of what was feeling strong. But uh, we'll have to see where they go from here on the side of Team Moped. And of course, Corgi Army. Where are they going to opt for next? They think about finishing off that bottom tier two tower finally, and then maybe closing out the uh, outpost game. We'll see. Oh, yeah, that's right. They didn't actually finish that next wave, so bottom tower is still living. Yeah, it would have been really good to get that knocked down just for the outpost, too, but obviously most things for the Corgi Army just going fantastic at this point. Um, I mean, the best thing you can do right now, I would say, is try and think about what it is that Moped need to get back in this game and then just shut it down. And in this case, their game plan is fairly uh, obvious based off of their build, is that, or off of their team, is that they basically need Roche and Tier 2. Like, they, they can't do anything else. They can't initiate on you, so... To me, I would just be trying to get some good ward coverage in their triangle and around Roche and uh, prepare for that. But oh, for life, they go for the instant aggro. That's a good play when you're behind. Yeah, get that tombstone down, pop the ulti, and that is a quick and easy kill on the drow. Thinking about going on in this here, I don't know if uh, Orgy Army can really do that much come and contest, but it looks like it's going to be uh, an attempt to actually finish off this tier 2 tower up top now. That was massive. Like they, uh, they're going to be able to trade for tier twos here. Sure, Lulu might get bottom, but I mean, this tower was eventually going to be free anyway. Uh, just based off of like the heroes they have on their teams in terms of, like split push and everything, it would have been very hard for Moped to keep covering that tier two tower for a long time without leaving the rest of the allies up top vulnerable. So, force this pressure out. Do they have the tools to get them out of here? That's the big question. Will they oh, want to fight top? Oh, this uh, Maledict down for life. That is going to be a chase down and a kill. Man, making that happen without even the stampede. Really, really uh, impressive play there. Look, punish that out of position moment. That's some rough stuff. Uh, that's not what you're hoping for, Moped. That's all right. Baby steps. One gain at a time. Got a ton of tower damage. Got yourselves a kill on Tabarum right after that ultra kill. So try and bring this drow back down to uh, at least close to your level. Over in the triangle? A hex? A stun? Okay. Finger right. of death. Oh, Lulu able to back away for the moment. The Eclipse down, but the Terrorize connecting onto all three. And with that, the Corgi army will get away. Aestrin makes Void Spirit pretty good. Uh, that one hurts. Yeah, and it would have been another amazing pick for you after just grabbing the Drought and then get the Void Spirit like that. Claw yourself back in. But, uh, I mean, it was a good Void Spirit pick. There's not a lot of, uh, of good chain disable or anything on the side of Moped. A little bit unreliable there. They do uh, have that blink now on Lion, though, um, which could make make a bit of a difference here. You can see, though, that they need that like follow-up stun, uh, whether that's the Lesh or the, the CK. They, they really need to be able to, to get that follow-up. And that was just more like an opportunity thing that they maybe could have uh, picked off the Void. But regardless, 7,000 gold lead, and anything can happen in these types of games, particularly when you've got a lineup like CK, Luna... Flesh. Towers just melt. That is true. They actually just need one uh, yeah. as the game goes on. You know, yeah. a single fight can uh, quickly be the end of your base if they happen to be close enough. So, some caution is warranted here from the Corgi Army. Not too much caution, though. Of course, I mean you gotta you gotta feel yourselves in terms of the aggression that is offered from your heroes right now. I, I think Lulu's in that state. You know, as the uh, the Kyan Saj already has the Agnum Scepter. And uh, BKB? No, no, I don't think so. It's considering a Shiva's guard instead. Nice. We love to see. Uh oh, by, uh, the danger zone. Uh -oh. The team backing up. Oh, that's not going to be there quick enough. It's too much. And that will be another one there. As can they find any more afterwards? Damn, Pete already used, but the blink forward. Go to Rick. Can't quite connect. And she showed for like a second. It was just gone. You know, you, yeah. you think you're like farming my triangle, I'm nice and safe. Like, I can grab this one wave. But unfortunate timing there with the Corgi Army moving to the bottom and just so fast on the jump like that. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Likely to be another tower here. This is a very tough fight right now. Unless they can punish Rick getting a little bit of position here, but uh, Rick's got the limits, he knows. Yeah. Does have that uh, Hood of Defiance as well, making that, that much easier to hold on to. Uh, top lane, Dr. J, pressuring it out. Trying to get towards the Holy Locket. Actually, has, almost has it done. But big question now is, where do you go from here? Probably need to wait for that uh, next item, um, I would imagine, for uh, Papaya before they can really take a fight, unless it's like somebody just terribly out of position. Yeah, maybe even like two items, honestly. 
Yeah. Like maybe like Manta and BKB before that, like one really big fight. I feel like the pressure oh, has to be on the oh, allies instead. Oh, they're right under it. They're trying to get the ward and immediately jumped on, tries to get out of there. The heal coming with the soul rip. The lion dies, but they managed to get the lesh away at the last second. Oh. <laughs> After. Or not. Almost. Or not. <laughs> or that not. would have been uh, an incredible live if Lesh somehow get out of there, but uh, not able to. Just way too much burst right now, this Void Spirit. Just so over level compared to everyone at the moment. And uh, Void Spirit, one of the, the harder heroes to play against in those situations because of the ridiculous amount, ridiculous amount of burst damage that you're going to get. It looks hard. like Roche will finally be falling here. That is important. <laughs> As they are gonna, <laughs> the Roche is important in Dota, it's, guys. It's 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 it's, it's a big one. <laughs> uh, I think particularly for this game, though, like that that feels like it's the high ground mechanism where it just changes what this team can do. Like Corgi Army can just sit in front of a tower and say, you know, come deal with me. Um, I feel like the 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 measurements there aren't right, by the way. And we're looking at the showcase view and how how tiny Roche looks compared. No, to... no, that's correct. It's yeah, you know, he's all show. You know, Baby Roche. Um. So at the moment, Paya Dyer scanning quietly over oh, here. Oh no! Oh they God, just hit no. on the scan. Oh, and look at that! All the arrows. Everybody starts ping, turning ping, ping, that ping, direction. Ping. We're going. Oh, but they created Paya getting out of there. Okay. Look at that. Speed so swift. Look, look at this time wasted as they come back to their own triangle with an Aegis. That is space right there. Mm. Very, very good. Weapon Much Chronos needed. Though, up top. That's a bit scary. Be that close to a potential initiation from the Centaur. If, if uh, we could see that, that Aghanim Shard come out, I feel like there's, there's some potential for a hold here. Uh, again, it's a long time for Roche. Uh, this often happens, and it could be a bit of an issue. A 12k gold lead. Uh, but this lineup, you know, as we've talked about a couple of times now, it, it definitely... Oh, wait a minute. Huh? All right, Trying is to go? Insane. That was dope. I mean, what a bait. I mean, this, this works? Do they have enough damage, though? Oh, no. I, I don't know if it's enough. Oh, God. Arrow comes in as well. Need to get out of there. Oh, Finger of Death comes in for the finish. The cast, end up though. losing the ledge. And the lion and well, Paya now trying to turn. Do they have enough damage? Aram dropping low is going to die. That's Aegis down, but Lulu showed up. This is where it starts to hurt as they are going to take down that Luna and take down all the rest of them too. My God. You know, the last time Rick died for a cause, it was in the exact same spot pushing a tier one. Are we all defending a tier one? So there you go. Rick, you know, could start a uh, own private graveyard up there of good decisions <laughs> of when to die. Yeah. Man. Well, uh, very, very strong showing that we're seeing right here, uh, of course, from the Corgi army. And uh, again, a lot of it just based upon it feels like uh, some, some solid play uh, out of Lulu. You know, didn't get a ton of kills early on, but making the most of it. This hero's nuts. And you can also just see like the communication that takes place in these sort of games in comparison to like your pubs, right? Where they just... yeah. That, that unified map movement of like, I am in trouble, and then like all 10 heroes just converge to this one point instantly. That reminds me of playing pubs in China. <laughs> just <laughs> everyone yells in five mans. That's pretty much it. That's, that's what you see. Moves together. Willow almost at a uh, Aghanim Scepter. By almost, I mean 2,500 gold away. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. It's all, it's all about like, defining expectations. That's all. Oh, Cloak of Flames. Let's go. I feel like this could maybe be a game where you even need to like disassemble the, the Dragon Lance to try and get BKB quicker. Ooh, true. For the Luna. Yeah, that'd be good. I like this decision, though. Can't just sit in the base and hope that good things are going to happen. Smoke out is four. Keep the Luna farming. Try and find a pick off. And, well, they find him. Oh, no! They hexed the wrong illusion and stun afterwards, but the stomp comes to try and turn this. Tronks tries to take him down, tries to do enough damage, but able to get the Hurricane Pike and the Force away. Still a good chunk of damage coming through. The right clicks now. Do they have enough? They take down two. Barum oh, tries Barum. to back out. This would be huge if they could find a couple more kills. The right clicks. Is it going to be enough? It doesn't look like it. The armor isn't there. 
And it's an ultra kill again for the Drow. Damn. A really nice Drow lineup. There's just so much support for Barum. Oh, you tend to think of like the old strats with like uh, Drow Venge, where you always have these like swap ups ready and available, and you're stacking ores and everything. And Drow Centaur has been a thing for a pretty long time too, for um, similar reasons. I mean, it used to be you'd see the the Centaur picked a lot versus Drow, so you get like help stampede, and then people were like, "Huh, what, what if we put them on the same team? How do you catch my Drow?" Like, bottom great spacing through the fight, keep the marksman marksmanship going, and uh, absolutely melting the opposition. That's right. Uh, it's looking quite good for the side of the Corgi army at the moment. Uh, Moped staying in this one. Going to go for, I think this is their last smoke, maybe. Um, really need to connect Check here. Oh, this now. would be a big one. And they get it. Lulu barely able to get the dissimulate off and then the jump away. Oh, that one hurts. Now the turnaround comes back another round. Oh, for life in some trouble. The Witch Doctor ulti comes out. Oh, it was looking so good for a moment. Base defender might be dead to Eptronx, but the turnaround again. Tries to find Lulu, going for the buyback now from CK as they want to try and find this kill on a Dota Rick. The jump through Lulu low, but is Lulu going to die? Oh. Couple more punches, not quite. Oh, they take him down yet again. BKB out from the Drow. The right click's coming through. Over for life back again, trying to find a finish, but with everybody else there from the Corgi army, it's another triple kill, godlike on Barum, and well, this one is looking uh, pretty wrapped up at this point for the army. See, what happened was that Maze's very refined internal clock was was set off by the uh, the Kai Assange and couldn't mm. get the, the follow-ups done. That's what it was. Tried to play oh. too honorable and not use the status bar. True. And, uh, that, that's what it was right there. Sass resistance. Sass resistance is the big save. Yes, it's been nerfed a little bit, but still 22% at percent and uh, certainly helping Lulu keep things going there. As uh, they, they once again roll right through them. And uh, they really want to take game one. I mean, again, it's only game one. So this is still a, uh, a good time to like adjust, right? Mm. These teams, yeah, it's a 25k lead, 30 minutes or whatever. But uh, I would not say that Moped are out of it heading into game two. They just need to uh, look at this strategy from this game and think about like what kind of tools were they missing, perhaps. You know, like yeah. either like I think their lineup could have worked. Uh, they would have had to play just like uh, maybe a little bit faster in, in some regards, like push towers a little bit um, as more of like a main objective and everything. But they weren't that far off, right? A couple picks don't happen on your Luna, maybe, and uh, you're able to snag a couple tier ones or maybe a tier two a little bit uh, sooner in this game, and you could definitely be uh, looking at a much more even matchup at 30 minutes. All right. Well, and I think maybe some of it too is just the uh, the like setup of of how strong a Void Spirit can be when you're kind of lacking control, at least until Lion Blink. And by the time Lion got Blink, it was like the game was feeling really hard to win at that stage. Like, you had to kind of play perfect. Um, now, I do like this. I love the double split Earths over and over again. So hard to push into. Um, but yeah, yeah maybe, why does maybe this if they... exist? <laughs> you know, we, we deserve this. As, uh, as Dota players. The best part is that it's a five second delay between each one. It's like, I swear just once you kind of like forget it's there. Like, aha! Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget. Coming back again. <laughs> Slow and steady beat down. Eventually you run out of mana. Surely. Do you? I guess eventually. Yeah. Depends how many clarities you have. Okay. Fair enough. All right, well, they don't like it. Time, They've had enough of that. Yeah, and in all that time, they were able to, uh, you know, get a little bit of damage up onto that top tier two tower, and Drow's going to have to come back and deal with that as well. Um, working towards that butterfly almost has it completed. Do they have any more smokes? It doesn't look like it. Uh, Aether Lens completed. We're getting towards BKB on Lesh. Uh, again, that is just so imperative for these lineups here. Get towards it. 12 to 38. And Lulu waiting for anybody to step just a little bit too far outside of the range there. We'll happily oblige in a kill. Uh, but we I just really like the, uh, I like the Epitronx BKB. Try and uh, use the Lesh for the space and then go for the Scotty on the Luna. I think that's a pretty good decision. BKB is not going to... like It saves you in some regards for sure, but then there's also issues where it doesn't. So like I can... Uh, 
you know, I, I can see why Pi doesn't want to just go straight for the BKB. It's just like the Drow might still just like shred right through you, depending on the positioning of the team fights. So try and utilize uh, the BKB on the last track to uh, to force and uh, pressure the Drow. So the Drow, of course, still having eight seconds on uh, on that BKB too. True. And you can see keeping those lanes pushed out. Ooh, quick little jump up there for life. Finds it. Hex afterwards. Follow up stun. The follow up, follow up stun. The finger of death. But again, Lulu barely able to get out of there. Oh, that one hurts. So much used again on that void spirit, and then the regen rune afterwards. Damn. The toffee. Well, Roche gonna be back up in 20 seconds here, and we'll see if uh, if Moped decide to try and uh, go and. Or a contention or something. Dying well, here we got holy locket. I mean, we got all for life with the blink of the armor, right? So like, uh, that's just chucking in, giving the vision, Ooh. giving the team the chance. All oh, F trunks. Dodges, Jukes wants to get out, uh, but it's not looking like it's quite gonna be there. The chase down continues, and Lulu, wicked sick. Honestly, surprisingly close considering uh, the chase down potential there, like. Maybe if that jump misses, get one good juke. Yeah. That track is one fast hero. This is crazy. For life, come on. You know the stream's watching. I know you want to go for an Age of Steel here. Let's see it. Ooh. Punches. Give him the punches. And will it be enough? The Voodoo oh, Switch Rue! No. <laughs> oh, base defender! What a god! Oh, oh so man. The, the buff to that? Oh, yeah. Oh, was sick. He owned. Um. Need more afterwards, though. Paya and Dr. J Liver just have to get out of there. The silence won't be able to break the TP, but in the end, it still will be the uh, Roche that's going to go the way of the Corgi army. God, I love oh, Voodoo man. Switcheroo. Oh, we got we got the double though. We have the shard and the eggs. Oh yeah, terrifying. They they buff that too, which I got some pretty serious buffs in C, and when it comes to the ulti stuff. Both Voodoo Switcheroo and the Death War got buffed. That's and, crazy. And, uh, yeah, she's level 18. Shit. That's what a Philosopher's Stone will do for you. We need two more levels. We need the Death War attack range, too. I want, I want full power here. Don't think we're going to make this 25. Sad. Yeah, I know. Disappointing, for sure. I guess the other thing besides the Philosopher's Stone is also 5, 3, and 20. Holy moly. That part is also pretty helpful, it turns out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, game is looking tough. Dr. J Liver has picked up the mechanism. Uh, we don't quite have the BKB or the Scotty. Papaya actually has 4,300 gold in the bank. And I need to invest that, but obviously really difficult to get out onto the map uh, towards that secret shop. Game is just hard. Yeah, doesn't have that, but I mean, 2,700 surplus. So it's like, yeah, I could buy something, but really not a great feeling. Them. Four seconds stun into nothing else afterwards. Pops the ulti, stampede afterwards, getting chased down. O for life in some trouble. The big silence and then the cast onto both. Oh man, they did it to him there as it's five for nothing. And the Corgi army looking to try and end this one off here. GG is going to be called as we're gonna have to wait and get themselves into game number two in just a bit. Uh, but first blood drawn by the Corgis. Yeah, Not the very well I thought I would say. <laughs> uh, pretty commanding performance after the uh, sort of like the first half of the game. Like Moped were still in it, and they had their uh, their opportunities with some like cross map movements, especially into that dire jungle. But uh, Corgi Army were really good on the defense. I mean, they uh, sure they maybe lost a couple picks, and uh, Moped tried to capitalize on those. But uh, very quickly, uh, the troops rallied in the Corgi Army and uh, marched straight to victory. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you want more content like this, don't forget to visit our website BritishEsports.org. Follow all our social channels in the description below and we'll see you next time.